Paul, let's move on to your career in the game, if we can. Um, as a as a Norwich City fan myself, um, okay, interesting. Uh, <laughs> I want to hear your time at at the club, kind of what happened, how you saw things, etc. Because when you were um, kind of there on the outskirts of the team, I was a I was what 11, 12 years old at the time, and I knew who you were. I had you on like oh, manager and stuff like that. Um, I was wondering when you were going to kind of make your break into the team, etc. But let's go back a little bit further. You were in the Norwich City Academy or in the side from mm. 13 years old, is that yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 13. Yeah. So how did that kind of come about? How did you find out about the interest from Norwich? Where were you playing at the time? Because obviously from, uh, I believe, Dagenham, where you kind of grew up in Essex, et cetera. Mm. How did that kind of come about when, you know, West Ham's kind of down the road, all that kind of stuff? Were you in other academies, et cetera? Yeah, I, was, um, I just obviously just got pipped at, uh, at Wimbledon at the time. Um, and because obviously that was, that was obviously from London based. So I was, I was sort of going on trial there and I was having a look at me and stuff and ultimately back then you just you play for your school side or you play for your district there wasn't really much else to I mean, in your Sunday league team there wasn't too there wasn't even too much in the academy sort of age that anyway I think the youngest was about 10 you know about 12 11 12 13 okay. years old anyway so the younger ones wasn't really seen about being in the academy so mm-hmm. you know I was just playing my Sunday league football just enjoying myself and Wimbledon come across I went over there a few times enjoyed it and then I was playing for my school side and Norwich had a London scout and obviously he asked me to go obviously up there at half term to have a look at, you know, I've gone troll for the, for the, it might have been the February half term, whatever it was. So I went up there, um, done my trial for the week, um, done really well, enjoyed it. And then they offered me a, a contract as well. Uh, Wimbledon offered me a contract as well. So um, I spoke to my dad about it. Um, Obviously, I listened to my dad because he, he went through the whole scenario with my older brother. Um, so, okay. uh, my older brother played for Arsenal back in the 80s. So, my dad obviously done everything in that sort of way. So, my dad said, I think Norwich would be better for you, um, better did club. He, did he give any reasons why? Uh, you know, obviously, again, from a Norwich fan perspective, it's fascinating to hear that. You know, you could move to London, but your, you know, your father's telling you actually a couple of counties away. <laughs> you know, Norfolk yeah. might be a better option. It's uh, it's interesting. It was a a lot better setup. It was a probably as you look at it and think, well, as you get older, have you got more of a chance of maybe getting Norwich first thing than we do Wimbledon? Even though you're still sort of you know five years away from that, but yeah. you start to look at the bigger project. You start you said like you know the people there are a lot you know you know looks like more professional, looks more. Um, it just I think that, that that's a better club for you, Paul. Um, and obviously being a 13 year old boy you have a little bit of opinion but ultimately you know your dad's obviously going to be the one's taking you there and, and watching yeah. you and yeah. do you know what I mean like <laughs> whether you play for Wimbledon Norwich West Ham whoever it is like you're playing football obviously you yeah. want to play for a good side but ultimately it's just academy football it doesn't matter who you play for because do you know what I mean it's just you know you're playing football um, so and I like like I say I, I like this like, it sounds weird but the smell of Norwich the training ground the people the the yeah. welcoming, the everything like that. It was, it, it was just all spot on. So, um, yeah, no, I, I chose Norwich. But luckily, because I was still London based, um, we we had a lot of London players, and we we would train once a week down at Potter's Bar uh, at a school. Yeah, and so yeah. we'd all go together and we'll mix our age groups up because we obviously, I think there was only maybe, I think there was probably about eight or nine London based boys my age, and then year above. So we'll mix together and make it sort of fifteen or sixteen of us mixing together and. Right. Um, and then obviously any Sunday matches, we'll all meet up our age groups and we'll play whether it's home or away. And, uh, and we got through that until you got the youth team contract and then you, you move up to, uh, and I moved up to Norfolk and then yeah. had my, um, my uh, scholarship up there. Right. Okay. And then I suppose you're kind of going through youth teams and you, you know, you're in the reserves and whatnot. Um, mm. You had a few pre-season friendlies that you were involved in um, with the club. And obviously you kind of had a, a substitute, um, you, do, you, know, you appeared on the sub bench, etc. Mm. What kind yeah, of promises yeah. were made to you at that time where you kind of just you've been told that this is for experience? Did anybody say that you will get a chance at any point, or you know, how is that kind of involvement done? Are you just kind of chucked in? Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, back sorry, back there, it was, um, it was a case of 
you were the last to know. So like now, obviously, you look at managers and coaches and they'll have their arm around players and tell them exactly what's going to happen and this is what's yeah. going to go on. And this is how we're going to look after you. And it's like man management sort of, you know, speaking to people. We're back there. It, it was a case of you will get your respect once you earn it. Right. And um, because obviously I was going through the youth team, doing jobs as you do, which I think is fantastic, by the way, cleaning boots, getting the goals out, picking the cones up finding yeah. the balls when, the, when all the first team are kicking it away and shooting and, um, <laughs> you know, or, or doing the first team cups of teas or getting them towels because they need a, a three towels for a shower and all these sorts of jobs that you have to do as, as, a, as a scholar. Um, mm. As well as once they leave, you've got to make sure that you clean every single room and corridor and car park and clean the players' cars and all the sorts of things that I think is, for me, was fantastic because it makes you learn and respect and understand about and they, you're an apprentice. You're not a pro. You're not a footballer. You're an apprentice. So yeah. uh, first and foremost, you learn. You ex- you know you go through the experience. You be humbled. You be grounded. And then obviously, once you get in the first team, you get your pro contract. Then you can obviously, you know, then you can enjoy your time. But not now. Yeah. So it was a real good learning curve sort of thing. So like you say, I I just went about my business, trained as hard as I could, played as many games as I could in the youth team, hoping that I was going to play for the reserves. Whenever I played for the reserves great experience because you're playing at the stadiums and you're playing with with pro football you know the pros and stuff like yeah. that and you learn a lot of them and you want to you want to test yourself and stuff like that so i'll just get on my business in my second year scholarship i got my chance to train with the first team a little bit more and i think it was after christmas i was training with them constantly all the way up to the end of the season wow. and the last two games of the season and it was it was division one division one back there but it's a championship now we yeah. got in we played the last two league games i got on the bench he put me on the bench instead of two of the um, main pros. And like I say, I think both of the pros at the time were on about five and six grand a week, cool. uh, which was obviously big money back there. And I, I, was on 50, I was on 50 quid a week as a scholar, for second wow. year. So I was, I was thinking, do you know what? I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon. I'm buzzing. So we, we played Barnsley away. I was on the bench, very, very close to coming on. Uh, he didn't, Nigel Worthing at the time didn't throw me on. Yeah. Um, but I was happy to be involved, do the warm up. I was constantly warmed up for the full 90 minutes. So I was, do you know what I mean? 18 year old at, at Oakwell uh, uh, in the championship. I, just, I was just made up. So I was buzzing with that. The following game, the last game of the season, we played Stockport at home. We won two or three nil to get into the playoffs on the bench, hoping he was going to throw me on. Didn't throw me on again, which I thought, oh, do you know what I mean? I, I just really want to get on. Like, even if yeah. it's for 30 seconds, just say that you've played for Norwich for like first team. Yeah, um, yeah. And then we got into the playoffs. Um, played, we played Wolves home and away but yeah. Worthington didn't put me on the bench for them two games for whatever reason I think he's gone for more experience because the playoffs and things like that yeah yeah, um, yeah. We, we won we got through we got to the final at the Millennium Stadium against Birmingham yeah, again he didn't there. put me on the bench he didn't get on the bench because again he, he's kept the same squad as he did in the, in the playoffs and again yeah. experience and stuff and I think Euron Roberts at the time the, the big centre forward I think he'd just come back from injury as well so um, it put me even further down from it actually being on the bench at the time yeah. there. I think he was injured the last two home games anyway. So yeah, yeah. Um, we, we lost on penalties to Birmingham. They went up. We didn't. And I obviously went away. Obviously, just before I went away, uh, we had our individual meetings. I said to, to Worthington, I said, like, you know, I was, he said, like, I think you've done all right. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to seeing you. But, oh, you're like next season. I said, look, I'm obviously going to my third year YT now. I'm 19 in September. Um, I think personally, I think maybe, you know, maybe warrant a, a, a first in contract. And it was yeah. so nerve wracking asking that because I'm 18 years of age and stuff like that. But I only asked that because I've been on the bench twice and I've been with the first team three months throughout. I was doing jobs, but training with them, going on away games with them, doing the cups of tea, staying in the hotels with them, just doing yeah. that sort of thing. And, and, and also that summer when we lost in the playoff final, that all, half of the pros went away to um, Malia. Was it Mali or, or, or Valerie? Some, some sort of lad's holiday. And they invited me to go. And uh, Clint Easton, Clint Easton uh, paid for me to go. Uh, I think it was about 350 quid or something like that. So he paid for me to go. So Ewan Roberts was there. Uh, Daryl Such. Uh, Phil Moryan. Um, Darren Kenton. Uh, Clint Easton. Daryl Russell. All, all, you know, all the, Brian McGovern. Yeah. All, all the players. Um, I think Rob Green was there as well, I think. Or Andy Marsh. One, no, Rob Green, I think, was there. But like you say, there was, there was probably about 10 of them there. And they, they invited me to go. And I was a youth team boy. Um, and they said, no, you've got to come last. I can't afford it. And Clint was like, AZ, I'll pay for you. That's not a problem. Got along with Clint really well. And right. he, um, so obviously I went away. And so I thought, you know what? I've been, 
on holiday. The lads obviously know me. I'm training with them all the time. So I thought, I said, so I said, like, you know, can I have a, you know, I think I warrant a first in contract. Like, I'm not saying it doesn't matter about money. I said, like, you can put me on fifty-one pound a week. It doesn't bother me. Like, I just, you know, just to be a pro at Norwich. Like, that's that's my dream. That's my goal. So we've been waiting for some thirteen. Wow. Um, and then they was like, mm, well, you still need to prove you need to do this. And Worthen said, I'll tell you what, you look after yourself in the summer away from here. You come back yeah. pre-season, you look sharp, you'll get yourself a deal. And I said, fine, well happy with that. So yeah. I went away, I worked, obviously looked after myself in the summer, come back pre-season, was with them all through pre-season, worked really hard. And then, um, and then first game of the season, I, didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't involved, I was back with the youth team. And then, and, and then as I went back with the youth team, Ian Henderson went with the first team and so did I think Ryan Jarvis, so we sort of swapped over. Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking I'm a third year YT now, I'm not, I'm not, not I'm further down the pecking order. Like, yeah, this, this ain't right. I'm, I'm 19 in a couple of months. Yeah, I'm, yeah. And any kid should know that if, if kids younger than you are ahead of you, then obviously the clubs don't think highly of you. Yeah. You know, you know they, they, they think, and they, like, like they should do. Like, if there's someone below you that's better than you, they're going to push them through. That's just what it is. Mm. So, um, I'm waiting, obviously. I thought, oh, no, I can't do this. So, I, I obviously said, you know what, well, I don't really understand this. So, A.D. Bruthoy was a manager at the time, a youth team manager, and he was like, he said, look, obviously, Worthing, obviously, managers just picked his, you know, he thinks that, obviously, whatever reason it is, you've just got to work hard and get back in. And, obviously, I won't get in the youth team. And I just thought, you know what, I don't know what's going on. So, I pulled Worthing and he just said, your attitude stinks. You, you know, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. And I really wasn't. Do you know what I mean? I was as, as humble and grounded and, and that sort of thing. I was, I was pissed off and I was a little bit disappointed, but you know, what, what kid wouldn't be. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I, didn't, I didn't show that in training. I didn't show anything because I, I, I was too scared to, in a way, because I wanted my chance. I didn't want anyone to know that I was hurt. Um, so I just left it. Um, back with, like I say, with the youth team sort of thing. And then I just thought, you know what? And my dad always said to me, and because he, he, he had my older brother, was asked me years ago, he said, Paul, they obviously don't want you. They don't rate you. You're, nine, you're nearly 19. You're in your third year of YT. If they really thought highly of you, you'd be in the first team or you'd have a first team contract now. Purely and simple. Yeah. Uh, he said, I feel like you're wasting your time. <coughs> um, you, you're playing with the youth team boys. You're playing with under six, you're playing with 16 year old boys, 17 year old boys, you're 19. It shouldn't yeah. be happening. And I said, yeah. you know what, dad, you're right. So um, I packed up my stuff. Uh, Malky McKay at the time said, Hazy, don't leave. And Paul Heckenbottom said, don't leave. You, you'll shoot yourself in the foot. I said, listen, I'm 19 now. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm nowhere near the first team. It's not happening for me. So I was, I've got it in my car. I was just what? about to ask, you know, were there any of the pros at the time who were, you know, giving you advice on what, you know, what, what to do on that? Yeah, because I always I asked you and Roberts, I asked Malcolm Mackay, I asked Paul Heckingbottom, um, Darren Kenton, uh, Clint Easton. To be fair, like Kent and, and Clint Easton and Daryl Russell and stuff were still youngish boys trying to establish their names and they were playing first team football, but they were still only 21, 22 yeah. and they were. Um, I mean, they were playing, they were just living life. But I just want to listen to the older ones, like uh, Mike Jackson, uh, Malky Mackay, Euron Roberts, the yeah. older ones. I want to hear what they were saying, and, and AD Bruthway, and that sort of thing. And I was just saying, don't, don't go, Paul, you shoot yourself in the foot. You've still got a chance. I said, look, I really haven't. Like, you know, I, I've been here two and a bit years now. They know what I'm capable of. If they don't think I'm good enough, that's fine. I'll go. I'm wasting my time. I could be at home with my family, or I could be at a local a club. Like, it's not a problem. I, I just want to play football. Sure. Um, but, so I packed up all, obviously I had a little clear at the time, went to my digs, packed up all my stuff. I've been away from my family for two and a half years and I just drove home. And the relief was like, wow, Paul, like yeah. you finally did it. Like, as in like, not, not like, you know, it just felt like a little bit like a cloud over me for the last sort of six months where I just thought I've been lied to. I've been pulled to pit at the post. I've been mentally, you know, like a little bit mentally bullied where they're saying like, you know, you're not good enough. You know, you do this, you need to do that. That sort of thing. You're not good enough. Yeah. You know, screaming at you you know, telling you do this, go and do the jobs. And I just thought, I'm 19 now. I, I, I've done my time. Do you know what I mean? Two and a bit years, like, you should know if I'm good enough now. Like, if I'm not, just let me know. Just let me go. So then, um, yeah, well, I went home. So well, Sorry, just before you kind of go, was there any options at all to be able to go out on loan? Did the club ever discuss that option and say, well, look, we're no. not giving you any game time. Instead of doing the youth stuff, let's actually get you somewhere playing football. And then that's then an option to prove yourself, surely, rather than going through... But, the same, yeah. Going back to what you've done a couple of years ago, it, didn't, it doesn't make any sense in my head. Yeah, potentially, but because you're on a youth team contract, it's, it's a little. I don't know, it's a little bit different. But anyway, like I say I patted myself when I home. I was there for two weeks. Norwich was constantly phoning him. My dad pick up, say, look, he ain't coming back and stuff like that. And they said, look, he has to come back. He's under contract. Uh, he's breached a contract. <clears throat> but if he comes back, things won't be any different. Because my dad was like, listen, 
he's coming back and the case is going to be, you're going to put over his head, him leaving, that sort of thing. And I said, no, no things, won't, things will change. Like, things will, will treat him normally. So, I obviously, thought, Look, I'll go back there. So, I went back there and I was back with the youth. I wasn't even playing with the youth team. I was sitting on the bench for the youth team. Wasn't even playing for them. And, I, and then, anyway, AD Brewery called me and he said, Look, nice worth it. And said that you can go down to Torquay. Like, they, they potentially might want to take you on loan. Okay. So I was like, right. I said, right, brilliant. Get in my car, drove all the way down to Torquay, which is, as you know, it's a far, it's a far drive from Norwich to Torquay. Yeah, Norwich to anyway. Really far. That's a, bit, that's a bit of a... <laughs> it's, it's bad enough trying to get out of Norwich to Ipswich. That's a long drive. <laughs> but then you've got to drive away down to Torquay. That's horrible. Yeah. So, um, drove all the way down there. Lewis, uh, Leroy Rossini was the manager. Uh, obviously, we trained at some sort of... Um, we trained at the race course. Uh, okay. this little gungy beer. And it was a complete, complete contrast of what Norwich... Norwich was... Beautiful, the training ground. Obviously, you've probably been there. London and Coney, it's, it's yep. lovely. You go through gates and, do you know what I mean? Everything's macular. It's beautiful. Apart from the smell, because you've got manure, manure everywhere. Um, <laughs> but the, the training ground's immaculate. It's, it's beautiful. Lovely lunch. We, I went there and it was like a little shed. It's a League Two club, by the way. Go to the yep. stadium, it's a bit ropey. Anyway, trained there for, for, the, for the week. And, the, oh, sorry, I trained there, obviously, the Monday. And I was supposed to be playing for them in the, it was the LDV vans back there, but it was a Checker Trophy now. Yep. So um, I was supposed to pay for him on a Tuesday so we can have a look at me and that sort of thing. Got to um, the Tuesday afternoon and uh, Leroy Senior phoned me and said, Paul, we can't register you. I said, why? He went, because you're on a youth team contract. We can't, you can't, we can't take you on loan so that you can't play in the game tonight. He said, you can, obviously, in training for the rest of the week, that's what you do, but right. we can't take you, unless you get released there, we can't take you on. So obviously, I'd done my week there. I went back and I just thought, what a waste of time that is. Norwich must have knew that at the time because we have saying, you have, you know, you have your, your PAs and things like that. They must have known the rules, but they sent me away down there, maybe to get me out of the way. I don't know what it was, but I felt a little bit like, a bit robbed, a bit lied to, which was quite hard. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And I thought that was unfair. Do you know what I mean? Maybe because I've got my bags, I packed my bags up and I drove home. I don't know what it was, but it's, I think they wanted to have the last laugh and get me out of the way. And I felt, but, Obviously, then obviously about a week later, A.D. Boothroy said, look, I went up to, I was on a, co a coaching course with Brian Laws at Scunthorpe. He wants to have a good look at you. And then obviously you're going to get probably, they'll just take over your contract. You get released, so you get a pro contract there. Do you want to do it? And I kid you not, I said to him, where's Scunthorpe? <laughs> <laughs> right? And he went, he went, AZ, Scunthorpe's up north. Like, it's a lead two car. I went, all oh, right, okay. And because, like you say, the problem was, is because you're so... Um, because I was at Norwich and we didn't have internet back there. So it wasn't a case of like now you can look at everything. Sort of. So it was just more like look at the maps or you look at a little bit of or teletext where the – what team. I kind of knew that it was in League Two, but I didn't know where it was in the country. And he right. said, it's up north. And then he showed me on the map where it was. And I said, no problem. I said, I'll drive up there. I'll play the game. on the So I drove up there Tuesday afternoon to play Tuesday night in the game. I think I managed to score, do well. He pulled me in afterwards said, look, I like what I see, but it's only one game, and anyone can play well one game. So when you come back next week, we've got another game against Wigan or wherever we have. Let's see how you do against them, and okay. then we can talk. So went back to Norwich, trained with Norwich, obviously with the youth team. Went back up the following week, played again, done really well. We pulled me and another player in. Obviously, we're both on on trial sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, he spoke, he spoke to me and he said, "Look, I want to sign you. I'm going to sort this out with Norwich." Uh, do you want to come and play for us? And I said, 100%, of course I will. Of course I'll come and play for you. Yeah. So he went back and then they said to me, look, they're going to take over my youth team contract for the rest of the season. And I was like, I don't want to do that because if I get released at Norwich, at least I'm in the, at least I'm in the championship and obviously you've got more of a chance of maybe going down to a League Two club. But if I go to Scunthorpe now and become like a youth team player and then get released there, where am I going to go? I'm going to go to non-league football. Yeah. So I was like, no, no, no. So I spoke to Brian Law. He said, no, it's not like that. He said, look, we can't afford really to give you a pro contract because we ain't got much money and I don't know, I don't know anything about you. He says, but come in on your £50 a week, or no, sorry, I was on 90 quid a week then, sorry. 90 quid a week. And <clears throat> once you do well, you get in the first team, give, we'll give you a contract. But you'll be right. training with us all the time and you'll be with us all the time. He said, I haven't got a big enough squad. So I said, okay, no worries. So I went up there, obviously took over my youth team contract. I trained with them. I was on the bench, obviously, the first game, come on for two minutes. Mm -hmm. And then um, the second game, uh, he threw me on after half an hour and then I managed to score. And then the yeah. second game, second game he started me, or sorry, third game started me against local, local rivals against Hull, scored in that game. And then I just went on there. And then about three months later, they offered me a pro contract and then I signed it. So I'll say for the first three months from, from December till March, I was on 90 quid a week on my youth team contract because I just wanted to play football.
So you took a hell of a gamble by trusting them to take on your youth team contract yeah. at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Purely, because, and, I, and I say to every kid now, regardless of what status you want or what money you want, you've got to back yourself playing football. Yeah. And that's exactly yeah. what I did. And, and, that's, and that's why like, I think it's so important because if you're determined to do what you want to do and get where you want to get to, you've got to show what you're good at. Because like I say, you, you can't demand respect. You've got, you've got to earn it. So I always, my dad always drummed that into me. So I thought if I go to Scumfall or I turn my nose up at it, who's going to want me? Because I've got, no one knows me. I've got to put myself on the map. So I thought I'm going to go to Scumfall. And Paul Heckenbottom gave me some great advice. He said, Paul, I've just come from Darlington in League Two to Norwich. I know that you'll be good enough to play in League Two football. You'll earn yourself a good little wage at a club. You'll do well. And before you know it, you come back. And, um, yeah. and he gave me that advice. And A.D. Bruford was the biggest, at that time, biggest inspiration in my life because he said to me, Paul, you need a short-term, a medium, medium and a long-term goal. Your short-term yeah. should be go there and play football. Do you know what I mean? Whatever it is, have a, have a medium goal, have a, have a long-term goal, but you should have them. And I, and I, and I drove up there up to Scumble by the time in my little Clio with all, everything squeezed in my car. <laughs> and I thought, do you know what? I, I've got a lot of thinking time now. Four hours driving up there. I'm going to think about what, you know, what my medium term and long term goals. So first one, like I say, start playing football for, for Scumfall and, and playing football and letting people see you. Medium was literally was going to be a case of I'm 19 now. By the time I'm 23, I want to come back and play against Norwich first team <laughs> and score and show whether, Nigel Worthington what, I've, what he's missed out on yeah. and how much he made the mistake. And I, want, and I said, like, because I come from a championship side, I want to make sure by the time I'm 23, before my Bosman were all in, that I play in the championship yeah. and I'd be a championship player. And long term was basically, like I say, have a good career, earn as much money as you can, have a family, have your house, as you do sort of thing. Yeah. So I always thought, at least if, it's, if the short term or the medium goal don't work, at least you can get to your long term goal. And that's what A.D. Bruford always said into me. So that's what I did when I was at ISA's conference. I thought, look, I'm going to go to Scunthorpe. I need to play football. I don't care about the standard. I just want to go there, play football. I back myself 100% to do well, score goals. Yeah. And, uh, and that's exactly what I did. And then you signed your, obviously you signed then the professional contract. You had, what was it, three years there? You, you did very well at Scunthorpe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, yeah, it was March. So, um, like I say, by that time, I think I scored something like, six goals in 12 games or 13 games where it was so it's like basically go every other game sort of thing so I was doing well and uh yeah pulled me in and I had an agent at the time and that was another thing that Norwich didn't like that I had an agent um but he never done anything for me he never spoke to Norwich on any behalf what sort of thing but it was just yeah. more protection really for myself I mean, if I get released at least he can help me out yeah and um and obviously my agent was constantly phoning me all the time like saying that you know um, I know you're doing well people start listening to you I said listen I'm at Scumford I'm happy like we do this anyway they pulled me in to, to obviously negotiate a contract in March mm. so um, my dad obviously drove up and said right Paul let's go in and let's talk let's, uh, let's talk this so sat there got along with the chairman really well and Brian Law sort of thing yep. and uh, obviously the first contract they said like you know we're uh, doing ever so well obviously I was on 90 quid a week ever so well blah 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 sort of thing I'm going to give you 200 quid a week on a three year deal so okay I looked at my dad, my dad looked at me, he said, sorry, 200 quid. He said, he's on 90 quid a week. It's only, mm. he's only well, you want him to be on another £100 a week more for the next three years? And he was like, no, 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 no. That, that can't, he said, like, we can't happen. We've got, we've got to negotiate about this. So we negotiated, sorted it all out. Happy, got, we got, obviously, it was a two and a half year deal because I had the rest of that season, two more years sort of thing. Yeah. Really happy sort of thing. Phoned my agent, said, look, done the deal. He went, no, you haven't. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. dad's come out of the sign. He went, no, yeah, but I've got I've got walls on the phone. They want to take you. Wool. Went, wow. Yeah, wall. There was walls, and there there was talks of maybe another club. They said walls want to want to take you end of the season because you're going to be your your because obviously I think when I went to Nor this is another thing about Nor what Norwich did right, and obviously they had a thirty three percent sell on clause if Scunthorpe sold me. Okay. So they they released me, but they said to to Scunthorpe if he goes to do this wealthier. Because we brought him through at 13 to 19, we put a lot of time and effort money into him. We want 33% sell on clause. Right. So it's gone for free to that because they thought, well, look, it's a gamble. Do you know what I mean? If he doesn't do well, they, they don't get any money. But if he does well and get moved, at least we've got some money for him for nothing. Yeah. So yeah. it was like, you know, he said, like, you know, Wolves will take you end of the season. Do you know what I mean? That obviously, if you leave, when you leave on a free transfer, because obviously, uh, Scumford will get no money. Norwich will get no money for you. So we're all, you know, we, you're going to be laughing. You're going to be playing for Wolves. I yeah. said, well, I've just signed a two and a half year deal at Scumball. He went, no, you haven't. I went, yeah, my dad's come up and signed it. He went, you can't do that. I'm your agent. So my dad got on the phone. He said, you might be his agent, but you ain't doing any deal for him. 
Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and, and he said, he said, he said, like you know, he said, you have no right doing that regarding the contract. He said, listen, Mark. He said, if you want to try and take me to court, take me to court. He said, because I'll fight you. He said, my son. He said, you, you are not going to get any money out of him when he's 19 years old. He's signing his first contract. He said, you you were nowhere when he was at Norwich. You didn't help him out. Didn't do any single thing for him. Didn't look after him. Yeah. He said, yes, you're on the contract. He done nothing. He said, he's my boy. And I'm going to sit there and I'll negotiate. He said, I know the chairman. I know the first team manager. We get along really well. He's happy there. He doesn't want to move. He's settled. He's obviously gone for a bad time at Norwich. And that's what's happened. We just signed that. We just thought we'd phone you up to let you know out of courtesy. But that's what's <laughs> happened. If you, if you want to carry on being his agent for the next deal and stuff like that, then we'll see how good you are. He said, if you don't, we'll go and get someone else. It doesn't bother us. Yeah. So he was like, no, no, okay, then we'll, we'll, we'll work this through together sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, I obviously signed a two and a half year deal, and I was like I say, I was I was really happy. It's gone for I've got I felt a club that liked me and appreciated me, and and to be honest, like I say, they're the first club that really gave me my 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 debut. Well, they did give me my debut, but you know, the first club that gave you that sort of thing. And like I say, I just want to give it back by playing football and, and enjoying myself, and, and that's exactly what I did. Yeah, and you had um, I think during the first season you were you went to the the, the playoff semi finals, then there was a season avoiding relegation, but then yeah. in the third and final season. You got promoted and you did really well that season, didn't you? Um, from what I can, yeah. from what I can see, the move yeah. then comes about to to Barnsley. I'm, I'm questioning in my head because obviously I'm kind of thinking back to you know 2005. Why did you not stay with Scunthorpe in League One and opposed to going to Barnsley in League One? Do you know what I mean? You've now, you've now gone up a level. What, yeah. What? How did that kind of come about? What you know? Was there other interests other than Barnsley at the time of? You know, you've established yourself. You're scoring goals. You're performing well. What as a why not stay with Scunthorpe in the same division as the way you yeah. go? Yeah, there, there was interest, and I'll get to that. But like I said when I said to you, if you go back to obviously when I um, I said to you when I was wanting to go and play football, and you know, I say to every young kid, do that. My mm. other downfall was because obviously I signed that contract, and I think I scored eight goals in sixteen or seventeen games. And like I said, we lost in the playoffs. Yeah. I was playing yeah. really well. People noticing me and sort of thing. I went away that summer, and I did not look after myself. I, oh, okay. I was, I was, I was lazy. I didn't hardly, I didn't go for any runs. And to be honest, back then it was we didn't. Have, you didn't have no sports scientists. You didn't have nothing. And I, Peter B, agree. An old, old pro that used to say, "My off season's my off season. I will go on holiday. I'll eat crap. I'll do what I want." And then pre season's <laughs> all about pre season when you get fit. That's what it was. So it was drums in my head a little bit like because it was my first. You know, at Norwich, you get given a um, a sheet with uh, sports scientists and said, like, you know, off you go, sort of thing. At Scunthorpe, they couldn't afford sports scientists. You didn't know too much about, or you know, what you should and shouldn't eat, that sort of stuff. So I just listened to Peter Beagre and I thought, do you know what? I've got no one overlooking me now. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going away, I'm going home, I'm, I'm a pro footballer now. Yeah. And I, I didn't look after my body, I didn't go for runs. And I come back pre season and I was at the back of the pack for running. And I was, I was, do you know I mean, I was running with Beagree at the time, and Beagree was really slow. He was like, say, he's 35, 36 at the time. <laughs> and I was, I was, I was 19, and I'm running with him, battling it out to come last. And I was being sick, and I was just, I was overweight. I was, I was in bad, bad shape. I didn't look after myself at all. So I started the pre-season, obviously, as you do going for the game, because I, because I, because I ended the season really well with, with, uh, with that. Um, I started the season and I, I think he scored a couple of goals, but I wasn't really performing. He brought in a, a striker from Rangers, uh, Steve McLean. And Stevie went on that season and scored 32 goals, I think it was. Wow. Uh, and the other striker scored 15 goals. And I think I scored about seven and I hardly played. And we nearly got relegated. And when I say to you about like how much I wanted to play football and my design and stuff like that, I took a back seat that season and I wasn't doing... I, 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 was, I was terrible my second season at Scunthorpe, like awful. Right. And um, I, wasn't, I was in bad shape. My head was gone. I wouldn't get out on loan. I wasn't playing football. I had a big bust up with Brian Laws, all that sort of thing. Uh, and coming to the last season, I thought, do you know what? I need, to, I need to do something. I'm out of contract. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if anyone's going to take me or want me sort of thing. I need to play football. I need to do well. I want to do well for Scunthorpe. So I looked after myself in the summer. And then obviously, like I say, I had a really good season that season. I got 20 goals and we, we, got, uh, we come second and got promoted. Yeah. So when I say to you about like, when I talk to young players, I've gone through different stages where I think, do you know what? Listen to me because you don't want to do the things that I've done wrong. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You want to listen to that sort of thing. So when I say to you, like, you know, I left Norwich on, you know, 90 quid a week. I want to go and play football. I, I didn't look after myself. And I, and I say I, I was a shambles. So, but yeah, I was coming at the end of the season, done really well. And towards the end of the season, like I say, I had the same agent. And he was like, look, there's a couple of clubs that want you. Um, 
there's Barnsley, there was Yeovil, because Yeovil just won the league as all that season. They just picked us to win the league. And yeah. um, they went up with Gary Johnson as manager. They had a really good team. And um, and they went up, they wanted to sign me. So I went down to Yeovil first for, uh, for about three days. Gary Johnson put me up. Uh, Lee Johnson came along, took me around his house, showed me the training ground, showed me the ground, said, look, this is what we want to do. We want to get into the championship in the next couple of years. That's the ambition, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. I went around... Um, but come back, went around Barnsley's um, stadium. Andy Ritchie, the manager, showed me around. I looked at it and I thought, you know what, this, this is lovely, this is really nice. And obviously, I remember, I, it, I had flashbacks when I was at Norwich on the bench uh, against Barnsley in the game. And I thought, I've been here before, okay. I love this. This, is, this stadium's lovely. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've seen it in the championship, I've seen the, the crowds in the championship. I've seen that, do you know what I mean, the, uh, what they're like and stuff like that. And, um, and I liked it. And obviously, when, obviously went back to Scunthorpe. And Scunthorpe were, um, it's funny enough actually, because during that season, I think, I started eating off <clears throat> okay, and then I, I, I didn't. I didn't score. I didn't score goals in the first. I don't know. I scored goals the first couple of games, and obviously I went on a little spree where I didn't score. And uh, Brian Laws pulled me in. I said, "Look, we're going to offer you a new contract, and whatever I was on, um, I think he offered me an extra fifty pound a week for two years or three years." And I said, "Gaffer, I can't sign that. Like, I'll be, do you know what I mean? I'll be twenty four, twenty five on an extra fifty pound a week. I'll, well, you know what I mean? I, I want to try and make some a little bit of a living." Yeah. Um, and then, oh, oh, I kid you not, he went ballistic. He really? said, you, you, he was going, you, you cocky little bastard. He said, who do you think you are? He said, you've had one art, you've had a little bit of a good season for me, and now you're freaking, you ain't scored goals for me. Now you think you're better than this, you think you do earn the money, you don't earn any of this. Oh, and he just went into one of me. I'm sitting, I'm thinking, oh my God. And he's going, you think you deserve more money? He said, well, then if you deserve more money, you better start scoring goals for me now, otherwise I'll get rid of you. I know this sort of stuff. And I thought, oh my God. And the next game, we were playing Boston away. <clears throat> and obviously, I ain't scored. And in my head, all I'm thinking about is one is a local derby, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking, and, and it's, Boston's a horrible place as well to go to. So I'm thinking, not only is a local derby, but I've just had Brian Laws, my manager, at my throat two days ago saying to me about, I sh- you know, I'm not good enough. I should be scoring goals if I don't do this. And I've, because I've been cheeky by saying I think I deserve more money, I've got back myself. And yeah, luckily, yeah. after about half an hour, I scored a goal. And I got that monkey off my back waffle. And then I went and scored 10 in a row. <laughs> nice. After that, I scored 10 in a row. And I thought, wow, I'll get on with that. And then obviously managed to score against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge in the FA Cup. And, yeah. then, um, and then it was like a case of, right, I can, I can have a bit of a break now. I breathe at the same. Like, I back myself now. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it was like that sort of thing where, like I said, I've done well. And then um, I looked around and Scunthorpe were like, because they were getting promoted. They, obviously, some people got promoted and they haven't been promoted for a while. Yep. It was a case of they just wanted to really stay up. And that was their ambition, which I totally understand. Like you say, they, they didn't want to pay out the money. And I thought, well, you know, we've got, we got a good squad in League Two, but I don't know. Most teams that come up struggle the, the, the next season in League One sort of thing that I've looked at when I've analysed mm-hmm. it. And, I, and our Barnsley have been established League One side for the last couple of years. They've been from the Championship. I thought their ambition is to go straight up to the Championship. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And obviously, listen to Yeovil, but obviously, I had, obviously, because I'm an age, because I'm not a Bosman ruling, I was 21 at the time, the tribunal money had to come in. So, because I've been at Scunthorpe and, and obviously Norwich got 33% sell on clause, it's okay. So, right, okay. Yeovil said, look, we want to sign you, but what if it's half a million pounds? We can't afford that. So, it's, it's going to be half for us, but we'll see if we can negoti- negotiate with Scunthorpe to try and get a deal. So, okay, then I went to Barnes and said, look, doesn't matter what the tribunal is, <clears throat> we'll pay it. We want you in. 100% want you in, number nine, uh, our number nine striker, come in, score goals, get us promoted, that's all we And I just felt the love and the attention and I thought big stadium, big club, they want to go up. They just, they, they just filled me, you know, with the, all the enthusiasm that I wanted. And I remember coming back, well, like I said to you previously in this, A.D. Bruford said about the medium goal and I thought, Paul, you're 21, you've got two years to get back in the championship. Who's going to get you there? What are you going to do? You're out of ambition sort of thing. And then my medium goal was kicking in there and I thought, I've got a feel about this place. I yeah. think I could do well here. So that's why I signed, obviously, for, for Barnsley. And like I, said, I had to phone up Brian Laws to tell him I wasn't going to sign that one a nice call. Um, <laughs> I can imagine after the free Yeah, he was, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was saying all sorts to me on the phone. Um, and obviously, he signed for Barnsley. He obviously went to the press and, and, and threw me under the bus and saying everything. Basically, what I didn't say, he said all the things that he thought, you know, he, he wanted all the press to hear about me, all bad mouthy sort of thing. So I left Scumple at that time on bad terms. Yeah. Uh, which, listen, he's the manager. I was young. Like, it's not a problem. So, yeah, I went to Barnsley and, 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 I, and, and I've done well and I was really happy with my move. I mean, obviously managed to get promoted that season as well. Yeah. So then, the, 
obviously with that season getting promoted, you're then back in the championship. It's the you know it's come full circle. You're back mm. kind of where you where things started off with Norwich. Um, how how did that season with Barnsley um, with Barnsley in the championship go? How did you find um, find that? Was it was it the moment you kind of thought it thought it would be, or was it tougher? Yeah, no, it was. Um, yeah, it was a little bit surreal because obviously season, obviously season we got promoted was quite lucky because um, Andy Ritchie had inherited quite a good squad anyway, yeah. and we didn't do much training. We literally we come in, we'd have a laugh about, we'd do a little warm up, a little circle, as in like you know, uh, two in the middle. You got to keep the ball off them. <clears throat> we done eight v eights, like three teams of eight v eight, like two teams on one team on the outside. Do your little like five sides, like five o sort of thing like, with eight v eights. We was done. Have lunch, go home, and it was like that's what we was doing every day, like Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we'll play a game on Saturday or the Tuesday, and we was just winning. Yeah, and it was there wasn't much tactics, there wasn't much technical work, there was nothing. We just basically it was like we winged it through the season, but because we had such a great team and a great team spirit, and we all bounced off each other and had a laugh, and there was, there was like a growing out, going out group, then it was like a lads that would sort of look after themselves, and then there was lads that had talent, and there were lads that would just run around. We just mixed it all together, yeah. and like I say, training was a joke and a laugh, and it worked, we trained for about an hour, and then go home, and then we'll, we'll, we'll perform on a Saturday, and like I say, we, we, um, we won the playoffs. We got battered against Swansea that day. I, I, was, I was talking to one of the, the players uh, two days ago, and um, our captain Paul Reed at the time, and he said, he said that's the first time I've seen the final since since that day. And I said, I said Reed, I said we got battered. Swansea battered us from the first minute to the last minute. We just managed to get it to penalties and beat them on penalties. Yeah. So it was it was just one of them seasons that everything fell for us really. And then like I say we then we hit the, went to the championship and like majority of teams anyway. When you get promoted, you start the season normally quite well because you're in a momentum where, yep. you know what I mean, you're, you're used to winning, you've got the team spirit, you're, you know, you're buzzing, you're laughing, you, you know, you're used to the players. That got, you know, majority of the squads that get promoted, you keep your same squad anyway, just add to it. So that's what exactly what he did. And I think, like I say, I think in the first four or five games, I scored three goals. So yeah. I scored three goals in the first five games thinking, I even looked at myself, you know, like on Sky Sports, I'm seeing my name uh, second yeah, yeah. in the leading goal scorers chart after five games. I'm thinking, what a full circle! Two, literally two seasons ago, I'm playing. I've just scored against Rochdale in yeah. the in the in the League Two. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. at, at, like I say, at 20 years of age. Now I'm obviously um, at 21. Or I was 19 at the time. 21. I've I've just literally I'm I'm scoring against Hull and uh, and Stoke and stuff like that. And I'm thinking that's exactly why I said that medium goal. Where right, I've got back in the champion. And funny enough, I was one of the goals. Obviously, was against. Oh, obviously, starting the season. We went to Norwich. I think it was about the first five or six games in, I think it was. Yeah. And, um, and we played Norwich away. So it was my first time back to Carroll Road. And I don't think, I don't know if Brian, um, I don't know if Hamilton was the manager at the time there. I think he was actually. I think he was. And, um, and I was just buzzing because I was going back the first time back to Carroll Road. I loved the place and the people there, but I, just, I hated him. Uh, because obviously the way what he done to me sort of thing. Look, we're fine now, do you know what I mean? Because obviously I've seen, seen him since when he was at York manager and I spoke to him and like I do with all managers. I thought, I've had a fallout with some managers, but I'm all fine with them now. But, you know, because I'm still young and obviously I, I felt like a little bit betrayed, a little bit like you, you've hurt me here for no reason. So went yeah. back to Norwich and, and I, think, I, think we, I think Norwich scored and then we went down to 10 men. Or no, sorry, I think you scored two, two early on. Yeah, and then obviously I've, I've managed to score, and I was absolutely over the moon because obviously Jason Shackle, uh, who was there as well, me yep. and him obviously grew up together in, in the school boys and to the into the uh, youth team, and we've we've best friends. Right. So uh, as Shax was playing at the time, sort of thing, and I, I used to say to him, "I can't wait to play against you. I'm going to batter you. I'm going to make you, and I'm going to score." <laughs> and he used to be like, "You won't, you won't." I said, "Shax, I used to beat you every time in training. I used to make you. I used to outstrength you. I used to score past you every time. I know your weakness." I know that you can't. I know you can't kick it with your right foot. I know you. You're a bit of a pansy. I know you don't like that. You can see yourself a big boy, but you're not. I'm going to have you. I used to get, just get in his head, sort of thing. So Friday mm. night, sort of thing. I saw him. I saw Hendo. I saw Dean Sinclair, Ryan Jarvis. Um, but then Shaq's like, I've got to go to bed early because I've got a game tomorrow. And I was like, Shut up, Shaq. Like, I'm going to batter you anyway. So obviously going into the game, and um, and I scored. And the best thing was, it wasn't a great shot. It was a terrible shot. But he's managed to deflect off him and oh, go over to the keeper and got in the bottom corner. It was to make it 2-1. 
And inside, I was buzzing, thinking, yes, I'm not going to let him live this down. Buzzing, because I've scored past Shaq. And also, Nigel Worthy, and I eat your heart out, mate. I'm loving that. But obviously, ultimately, about two seconds later, we got a player sent off down 10 minutes, and you backed us 5 1. <laughs> Did you celebrate but, in front of Worthington or? No, no. Do you know what? Like, that was my first goal that I've scored. Oh, sorry, I scored against Scunthorpe when um, I went back with Barnsley the season before, and I didn't celebrate. And I always said, any, any club I, I ever played for, even though I did. Technically, I never played for Norwich. I was I was just in the best. I never played for him, but I grew up there. So I was yeah. like, do you know what? If I ever score against an old club that I've been at, I won't celebrate. That's just that's yeah. what I do. So I scored. I didn't celebrate. Plus, we was two one down. So you, you never you never celebrate when you're two one down. I don't think whenever you lose. So um, I just went back to the halfway line. But I just felt I felt like you know what? I've I've, I've achieved what I wanted to do now. Do you know what I mean? I want to show where I'm wrong. And obviously, I'm back in the championship at 21. So it was like a a win-win that season so but yeah no that season it was tough then obviously after a couple months later like anything momentum win we realised we probably wasn't good enough in the championship change the manager and then I managed to play right wing so the manager new manager come in they played me right wing which I'm not a right winger but I've done the job thinking I'll play done well and then I didn't really play after Christmas and then I left you went on loan to Puddersfield didn't you for yeah a bit of a brief spell um, and then I suppose at the end of that season then you 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 moved on to Scunthorpe again. The move then comes back. They're in the championship this time around. Um, was that? Did you? You know, obviously with a different manager change, was that was the option to stay at Barnsley just not there? You weren't going to get the game time up top. What you know? What what prompted the move to Scunthorpe? Yeah, well, like I say, after Christmas. So just building up to Christmas, Barnsley won off me a new deal, a new two-year deal. But uh, Steve Tilson was a manager at South End, and I and I, had, I wanted to go back home. Because I've been up north for a while, when I moved back down south. Yeah. So Steve Tilson said, who, who, he's been a close family friend for years. He used to pay my brother and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it was like, easy. I want, I want to sign you south. And I said, please. I said, I'd love to come back. You, you, you know, you mid table in the championship. You're a good team. Me and Freddie Eastwood up front. I'd love that. Yeah. And I'm not really. I was sort of in and out of the Barnsley team playing right wing anyway at the time. Uh, but they offered me two. Days. I said, look, I have to think about that. And then um, I went into uh, the South End, put three bids in for me in January. They rejected every single one. And then the Barnsley manager said, why do you want to move South End for? And I said, look, I just want to move back down South. It's nothing personal. I just want to move back down South. Obviously, I've just got a little baby now as well. I have my second boy sort of thing. I just think it's best for us to move back down South, be around family and friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was like, right, well, unless they offer half a million pounds, you're not going. I was like, well, they're not going to offer that, are they? No. Uh, even though they brought me for 400 grand so it didn't happen and then obviously Barnsley retreated their, took their contract away and I, I didn't play after that game I just sat on the bench and I said I went out on loan Huddersfield come back didn't play and then obviously how it works is is when you're, under, when you're out of contract if the club don't offer you a contract on, on within the first three Saturdays of, so the last, the last Saturday of, of May so the third, third weekend of May if they don't offer you a contract you can walk away a free transfer even if you're on a tribunal. So, obviously, Barnsley pulled me in, like, like every club does. They, they pull you in last game, you know, last day of the season sort of thing to have, like, meetings with you one-on-one. And they were like, look, you're not in my... Pl- I don't know if, I'm, if you're going to be... If, I don't know if I'm going to offer you a deal. I don't know if you're in my plans. I've been quite disappointed with you. That's what was spill. And I was like, look, I was in there. I was, I was as quiet as anything. I just wanted to get out of the meeting as soon as possible. I thought, I'm not going to waste my time on you. Look, you don't rate me. You don't fancy me. If you offer me a contract... I'm going to have to sign because I'm 23 at the time as well. So I couldn't even go on to Bosman. So right. I was like, right. So I just sat there, took my medicine. And they went, right, you'll be, you'll be in touch whether you're going to be in or next season or not. I was okay. like, right, whatever. I said, whatever, like, you know, whatever you want to do, fine. So got to, obviously took the, the, you know, took the sheet of paper that they wanted me to take. And I went home and I thought, right, I'll have to wait and see what happens. And then um, first weekend went, second weekend went. And we're getting to like, like a Thursday, Friday now. And I thought, I phoned my agent and I said, what if I don't get a contract through the post? Can I go? He was like, yeah, of course you can. You can leave on a free transfer. So I went, imagine that. I said, then I can freaking go. And then um, obviously, just before, obviously just before that, I, Nigel Atkins phoned me. And I was like, hi, Nigel, how are you doing? He said, oh, he said, yeah, just a quick one. He said, Mike Richards, what's he like? I said, no, nah, Rico's a great lad. I said, like, he's a great player around, around the change room, big target man, quite strong, um, can score a goal sort of thing. I said, why do you think about it? He said, yeah, he said, obviously, you know, we're promoted now into the championship. I'm looking for a, like a, a number nine sort of thing. He said, oh, I just want to know a bit about him. I said, yeah, I said, I said, but Nigel, I think he's just about agreed to deal with Port Val. That's what he's, he can move his family back there and he's quite, 
you know, he's quite happy to go back there. I said, but you can, you can ask out. He said, okay. He said, oh, what's happening with you? I said, look, I said, I don't know. I said, look, they, supposedly they might offer me a contract. I don't know if they are. I know they've got offer me a contract in this couple of days. I can walk away. And he said, oh, he said, what, what's your options? I said, well, that and nothing else. I haven't really thought about it. And he went, okay. And then obviously he said, look, I'll speak to you later. And he called me back literally up that afternoon, like a little bit later and said, look, <laughs> throw one at you. He said, would you come back? He said, look, I'm just throwing out this. I ain't spoke to the chairman. I ain't spoke to anyone. He said, but, you know, obviously we go way back. Because when I first went to Stamford, way back when I first, Nigel was the physio. So Nigel was the physio. Brian Laws was the manager and stuff. And Russell Wilcox was the assistant. That's how, they were just the three staff members. We had no goalie coach. So Nigel was the physio and the goalie coach at the time. Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. Nigel, obviously, Nigel obviously phoned me up and said that. said, like, would you come back? And I said, like, he said, you know, obviously you know me. He said, I'm the manager now, sort of thing. And, and you know a few of the lads anyway. He said, uh, he said, I think it'd be a good fit. He said, I'm going to speak to the chairman. What do you think? He said, I won't ask the chairman if you don't think so. And I went, Nigel. I said, Nigel, I would come at a drop of a hat. I said, you know that what I've done with Scunthorpe the last two and a half years I was there. I felt like I was sort of, Brian Law's done me over. He said, but to, to work under you as a new manager, Nigel, I know you personally. I know the players. I know the stadium. And I, and I also still lived in Scunthorpe as well. I was just travelling to Barnsley back and forth. So I still lived in the area. And my family was settled. So I thought... This, this is perfect, do you know what I mean? Like, I've played for Barnes and sit in the stands or, or play for Scumble in the Championship. So, yeah. sort out and obviously said that sort of thing. And then, literally, the next day on the Friday, I got a letter through the post from Barnsley saying, we've offered you a new two-year contract. Because it had to be, a two, I think it was a year contract. Yeah, yeah. They offered me, they offered me, I think it was £5 more a week. <laughs> purely, be, purely because, because Barnsley had to pay 400 grand in the tribunal for me, like when I first went there from Scumfall, yeah, they knew that they had to offer me a contract because they wanted. They obviously it was a tribunal. They need they needed to offer me a contract so they can go to court with it. So they offered me five five pound more it was a week on a two, on a year's deal to get me on a Bosman to just basically sit there rotting the reserves and not play. They wow. he didn't give two shits about my career. Yeah, and I phoned Nigel back and said, "Listen, I've been I've been offered this contract by Barnsley. Look, here's a contract here." And he said, "Okay." He said, "Look, obviously they, they've obviously gone to us, gone back, sort of thing." He said, let me see the chairman. And obviously, I had a really good relationship with the chairman anyway. I went yeah. around his house and negotiate deals. I was a uh, nice friend. I said, right, chairman's on board. He said, yes, you might get a little bit of stick from the fans to start with, but I know you're big enough, strong enough to handle that. Yep. Let's get you back in. I said, perfect. Right. So I didn't even, I, didn't, I thought, you know what? You can, you can hold back fire barns. I'm going to go and do this myself. So went to Stumfall, sorted out a deal. Um, and then obviously signed the paperwork and, 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 and buzzing to be back. So there was never, a, never a, another thought about going anywhere else. It, it, once that was all kind of, the conversation was had, Scumford was the main option to go back to. Yeah, I, f I think because obviously my agent, because I wasn't really playing, when you don't play, there's, clubs don't come to the front to say, look, well, you have to have you, you have to sign you. They want the ones that have been playing, doing well. Sort of thing. So I haven't played for four months or so. Uh, but secondly, like I say, because it was Nigel as a manager, and because I'm going back to my old club that I, I, I love more, like, loved my club sort of thing, Yep. And also, they're in, they just got promoted to the championship. So I thought, it ticks all the boxes I need. I don't need to move the family. I'm back in the championship. I'm playing under Nige. It's yep. my old club that I love. Why would I need to think about going anywhere else? Yeah. So I, was, I signed a three-year contract. I thought, I'm, I'm set up here now. I'm, 20, I'm 23. I'll be 26 by the time this contract ends. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy now. Let's, let's, let's contract. I'm just playing football. Yeah, definitely. And again, I, I suppose from a scumful perspective, also they... they you know, they got relegated during that season. You're then in League One. Was there any temptation to move at that particular point? Because obviously you then stayed and get promoted again back to the Championship. During that time, are you just enjoying your football at that point? You just don't want to move. You're happy. You, you know, this is the club for you. No, he you you come in official circle. So we played, obviously, we started the season Championship and we, we, we was in pre-season. And Nige is, for me, is the best manager I've ever played under. His man management, his tactics, his, his, his intelligence, but he's just, he's such a, he's so personal with you. Like, he'll sit with you at the table at lunch, no matter if you're a young lad. So, that first season in the championship, we had Jack Cork, who's at Burnley now. So, yeah, Cork yeah. coming. Cork, Cork is only 19. He's come from Chelsea. Um, and to be fair, I took Cork under my wing because I know what it's like to move up north. And yep. I know what it's like to be on your own, at, on, obviously, at 19, at Scunthorpe like as a young lad sort of thing. You, no one knows anything about you. Do you know what I mean? It's your new club. You've got no friends or family around you. You're on your own. Like I did when I moved up from Norwich to Scumble. I, had no, I didn't know anyone. I had no friends, no family. I didn't even know where their place was. Do you know what I mean? I even got lost. So I knew, I, I knew exactly what it's going through. So 
I took Paul Cooley under my wing and I looked after him. He came and stayed in my house a few times. We went out, obviously, for a little bit of food and things like that. And um, so we sat there, obviously, in the change rooms in pre-season. And I said, as he does his motivational speeches, I don't know if you follow him on Twitter, but he, he speaks every morning about how beautiful life is. Because so Nigel's gone through so many experiences. His wife nearly died of cancer, so he believes that everything should be a positive now. Do you know what I mean? So, such a good man. So, he, uh, he, um, he was saying, like, about uh, Saturday change rooms, like, right, who here has played the championship? And we've got, like, say, 25 players in there. Only me and Easy Rip Pen put our hand up. Right. So, out of whole, the whole squad out of 25, no one could put their hands up because no one's played in the championship before. Yeah. So, as I put my hand up, Izzy put it down. He said, look, <coughs> he said, that shows there to me how much we're up against it. Not only our wage bill and the size of our club, and we've not been in this, in this, in this league for 44 years, yeah. it shows how much we're up against it. We've only got two players that have actually stepped foot in the championship with experience in this, in this whole changing rooms. He said, for me, he said, I'm thriving off that as a manager. Taking all you boys as your first time into the championship, I get a buzz off that. You know what I mean? That sort of emotional, emotion, uh, that, that sort of speech that you get sort of thing. So, um, he done that. And, I, and to be fair, that season was really, really tough for us. Like yeah. we, every one of us learned a lot. Like, Nigel, Nigel tactics, his, some of his signings, he brought his panic signings, his, um, the way we addressed games and things like that. It was, he obviously, he learned so much as each game went on, he was sort of either struggling or he'd done things wrong or done, maybe done things right. Or, do you know what I mean? He learned a lot from that. And us as players, not apart from Jack Cork, uh, Martin Patterson, everyone, everyone else really underperformed. Everyone never, never hit their highest. No one performed really well. Maybe a game or two, but no one had consistently had a good spit, bit of form about themselves for a month or two months to give ourselves a chance. And right. we start the season, we start the season okay, but ultimately we was quite poor throughout. Throughout, and then we got relegated with about three games to go. Then we, then we played well the last two or three games when there was no pressure. We were already relegated. It yeah. didn't really matter. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so for me personally, I only got seven goals that season and I played about 40 games. So I massively underperformed. Yeah. Massively. And, I, and I'd say I signed a three-year deal. Not one part of my head thought I'm going to leave because I owed it to myself and more importantly, I owed it to the club who brought yeah. me back and to the fans to do well for them next season because... That's exactly the headspace I was at. Not one part of me even think, thought about moving or going on loan or not being there. I was, I love nice to bits. So I was more than happy for him to be my manager. The mm -hmm. players that we kept, I was buzzing with. And the players that he brought in ready to leave one, I thought, I'm getting a great feel for this. I had a good feeling about this. And then, like I say, we hit the ground running and then we, we, we got promoted. And the, old, the game was, the target was to get promoted again. And we managed to win the playoffs and go back up to the championship. And we was, we was even better as, as individuals. We started to make a name for ourselves. But more, more importantly, the team started to make a name for themselves yeah. as well. What was that experience like at, at Wembley, winning that game? That must have been an amazing day. Yeah, it was amazing. Like I say, I was lucky that I experienced that with Barnsley in the playoff final against Swansea. Ultimately, it was at a million stadium because... I was there with Norwich when I said to you start this when I was with Birmingham when we played Birmingham that was at Millennium Stadium because Wembley were getting done up wasn't it yeah. so when I went when, obviously because I wasn't on the bench that game I always said like, I, I, the feeling of the playoffs is unbelievable the final I want to feel this again so when I went back with Barnsley against Swansea um, it was um, it was unbelievable and um, so and we managed to win that so, and I managed to score in the playoff final as well even though it wasn't Wembley it was Millennium so I had that feel but it was um, the playoff final was unreal, but we were quite lucky, really, because we played Luton in the Checker Trophy in the final six weeks previously. And we was, we was, we was in the playoffs and we was quite comfortable. <clears throat> and Luton was second bottom or bottom of League Two because they had their points reduction. They were going through a lot of turmoil with, with fine and stuff like that. So they got 15 points deduction. They, they were getting relegated that season. Yeah. And, um, and we played them when we lost 3 2 in extra time. And we were favourites and we should have beat them. And, do you know what I mean? And, and we was disappointed on the day. I think we, we went 1-0 up, Hooper scored, and we was very disappointed. Very disappointed. We didn't really get ourselves going. And they were better than us on the day, and they beat us. Yeah. And, um, and Nigel said to us in the changing room, he said, we've got six weeks left of the season. At the moment, we're just outside the playoffs. We can come back here in six weeks' time and win and yeah. feel like the season, this is a blessing disguise that you've lost and we can get promoted to the championship, which was always our goal in the first place. Yeah. Or we can throw away the playoffs and finish mid-table and say what a disastrous season it was. We've just been relegated. When the Freyers go back up again, we lost in the, che uh, in the Checker Trophy and we couldn't get in the playoffs. Yeah, That's course. the decision we need to make now as players. So we need to up ourselves. So we managed to get into the playoffs 
in the in the semis. We just squeezed on the last game of the season. We managed to draw against Tranmere, who were level with us as well, which was ironic. We were playing them last game of the season. We were sixth, they were seventh. They beat us, they go in. If we beat them, we go in. So it was a do or die game, which was quite interesting. Went into the playoffs and they'll say, we got to the final against Millwall and it was just, again, it was surreal. Because we've experienced going to Wembley six weeks ago, it, it helped us. Mm. Do you know what I mean? As in like the experience, the occasion, you know, the atmosphere, the heat, the, the, how big the pitch is, the, yeah. the staying, staying in the hotel before the game, the meetings, the food, the whole surround of the, of the build-up to the game was, it really, um, we, we experienced it. And I know Millwall did, obviously, I think a couple of years before that when they got in the playoffs, whatever it did, um, some of them players. So we both experienced it. But for us, ourselves, Scunthorpe players, we, we experienced it and it was just, it was electrifying. And Millwall, for every one fan, we had, Millwall had three or four. So yeah. they, they, they beat, they, do you know what I mean? They had a lot more fans, a little bit like Luton. Luton packed out, I think they had 40,000 yeah, yeah. fans. In the, I think we had about ten or 12,000. So it was quite embarrassing, do you know what I mean? For fan-wise, base-wise. Same with Millwall. They, they packed it out. I think we managed to get about 20 in the end. And that's because I think we, we even handed out tickets as much as we can to get people down there because Gumball's a well-supported club. So yeah. Um, yeah. we managed, managed to beat them, obviously, last couple of minutes in the final. Mike, Mike Morford scored. And um, it, was just, it was just electrifying to know that we got married. And I think on the day as well, we found out Newcastle got relegated. So it's a case of little old Scunthorpe is going to be playing Newcastle in the championship in a league game. Like, it's, it's surreal. It's, this, is what, this is what dreams are about. And it was like, you know, we got relegated from the championship because we was not good enough as individuals. We was out of our depth. But we, every one of us learned so much to think, right, what we're going to be like now when we get back. And it was, um, it was and like I say, when I talk about the money ball thing, when we went back up to the championship, again, was, our wages was 2.2 million. Uh, nearest of Barnes is 5.5. And then got right up to Newcastle, 25.5 million a year. And, and we managed to beat Newcastle at home, 2-1. Mm. Uh, we, we beat Derby, 4-0. We beat Crystal Palace, 4-0. Uh, we beat Swansea, 3-1. Like, it was just endless. We, you know, we won. And we managed to say, like I say, say finish fifth bottom, uh, with two games to go, we were up and we was we were celebrating. It was yeah. it was surreal. And then, like you say, then obviously then we uh, we all went about our little journeys. Yeah. So after that season where you then stay up in the championship, you moved to Preston on the free transfer. Was, was there any contract offers from Scunthorpe at the time? Did they decide to move on, or what, what kind of happened there? Why did that move happen? Yeah, it was that. That's, that was probably the hardest time that I've I've left Scunthorpe purely because, like you say, the third, when I went back, I was so happy to be back. The yeah. first season of the I was so I was very disappointed. I was I was very poor. That's like I say, that's probably the worst season I've had, as well as the the season where I come back to pre, to Scunthorpe when I was overweight and I didn't do well and we nearly got relegated. So individually, I was poor. Then. Um, I managed to uh, turn around League One, do well for myself, and then we stayed up in the Championship. And we was getting through maybe again sort of February, March time because Scunthorpe never really offer you a deal too early because again it's financial things. They can't yeah. if you get injured, they can't afford to pay you. Obviously, your money that you work, you don't even be the same player. But they've done it quite, you know, quite structurally, as in quite good for the chairman. Do you know what I mean it financially worked because for the whole ten years that I knew Scunthorpe, they never once were in in debt or in in the red or struggling for money or throwing money out here left, right, and centre. So. He looked after it as a good business project. You know I mean, good cup runs were getting promoted for money to, to owe, which was good. Yeah. So, it, like I said, we was all flying, doing really well in the championship. And then obviously, Steve Walton, the chairman at the time, and Nigel said that we want to sit down off your contract. So, at the time, I knew that they brought a, a player in for 350 grand. And obviously, he was a top earner. Yeah. And I thought, right. So, last season, I scored 30 goals. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I scored 20 goals in, in League One. Mm -hmm. uh, and the season before I scored seven goals now I've got you know I've got obviously um, at the moment I've got ten goals in the championship up to now so I thought at the moment I'm, I'm playing really well so I think Warren obviously my, my contract I should be on what he's on the, the new signing that's just come in there on X amount of money yep. I thought it's not it's not too far obviously it's, it's more than everyone else but it's not X, it's not thousands more than everyone else so um, we, we negotiated sort of thing and they said we can't get near that and I said well look I feel disappointed because someone who ain't got no affiliation with a club who's just come in from a different club, mm -hmm. you just sign them with X amount of money. You in a change room, we all talk, we all know what, what people near enough we're on, sort of thing. And we and the players here that's done so well, we feel a little bit hard done by. I'm thinking as as a group, but for me personally, I think I warrant that money because you've shown what I can do for this club and and, and the goals that I've scored and my assists and my relationship with, with Hooper, we could take it to the next level. Um yeah. so 
and it was literally obviously I asked for X amount and it was literally like like I said probably about 100 pound difference but uh -huh. I had to work so hard to get to there where I said look it has to be minimum this and obviously it was a little bit less and I just thought do you know what is we, get, we, we keep talking now for six weeks and we got to this far and I thought do you know what we're March now probably best that we just talk end of the season let yeah. us just contract on staying up do you know what I mean? Because before I know it, I could talk about this, 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 and my mind goes away. I'll start underperforming. We can get relegated. So I said, look, just put everything to the back burner. Let's just concentrate on football. And then obviously, I managed to score 13 goals in the end in the, champ in the championship and uh, scored against, obviously, Man City in that league as in that season as well in, in the FA Cup. So I thought, that's good. And then that's the first season ever I've gone into a Bosman. So yeah. as the, obviously, the season finished, Scunthorpe said, like, you know, can we sit down and talk? And I said, yeah, we can. But also, I, before, we, I think a week to go to season, um, Darren Ferguson phoned me, oh, my agent, and said, like, we want, obviously, Paul to come to us. Can we, can we talk to him end of the season, please? Yeah, so, yeah. obviously, I know, I know I had to go to uh, Preston. Leeds wanted to uh, speak to me as well, and Forrest wanted to speak to me. I did hear Norwich were, were very interested as well, but they hadn't come to the, to the front yet. Like, no. Preston, Preston phoned and said they want me to go, and Leeds and Norwich wanted me to go and speak to them as well. Okay. But there was no date for that. But Norwich was supposedly sniffing around. I can't remember who the manager at the time was. And I was thinking, I'd love to go back to Norwich. That's the one club I really want to go back to in a championship. Yeah. Um, so I said, to, I was honest with I said, listen, I said to Nigel, I said, listen, Preston come in for me. So Nigel said, listen, Paul, go and talk to every single club you want to. Go and speak to them. Get a feel for it. And you know in your gut what you want to do. He said, because I cannot stand in anyone's way of bettering themselves in life, whether it's money, whether it's for, for ambition, whether it's desire, whatever it is, everyone deserves to go and do well for themselves and their family. I will not, you know, I think it's the best thing for you. And that's why I thought, you know what, what a good man he is. Like, the where some managers were about before. Yeah. Pardon? The difference between that and Brian Law's conversation. Yeah, exactly. And it's just it's just because Nige, Nige understands every human being. Like I said, if you go back to when I said about Jack Cork, he will sit down and, and speak to Jack Cork as much as he would do speaking to me. Yeah. As in, like, he, he will know about my family, he'll know about Jack's family, he'll know get about freaking Cliff Byrne family. He will just speak to you about, like, what did you watch last night? Did you watch this? Or, do you know what I mean? How's your family getting on? Like, How's your sister at school at the moment? Do you know what I mean? He'll just talk to you as, a, like, a human being, which goes a long way with respect. And yeah. um, so Nigel was like, like, he said, look, no pressure on you. Do you know what I mean? You know we want you. You know this is the contract. But if you're not happy with it, you decide it's all good. So, um, yeah, I went to, to Preston, obviously, with my family, my, my ex-wife at the time, and my, and my two boys sort of thing. And Fergie obviously got us there. He said to, he got the kit man to take my, my ex-wife and the kids into the, into the club shop. And obviously, he started chatting away to Darren Ferguson. So I, I, obviously, I went, uh, I went out and obviously kitted them out in the Preston kit on the pitch. And then um, I obviously went into the change room, had a good chat with Darren Ferguson, one of my agents, chatted to the chairman. And yeah. he locked the door. He locked the door. He spoke, he spoke to me about a few things. He said, listen, you're not leaving until you sign, by the way. <laughs> so would you, I, said, uh, I said, I said, what do you, what do you mean, Darren? He went, he went, you're my number one signing. I've wanted you. I like the way you play at Stonefall. Um, obviously, uh, I liked you when, we played, when I was Peter Brown manager play against you. He said, I think you'll take us to another level with the signings that I want. You want to get Danny Welbeck in from Man United and a few other signings. And he said, look, this is what I want to do. These are players. He showed me the players he wanted to get in, the training methods, that sort of thing. He felt, made me feel really, really like important. That's and he said, like, he said, he said, I'm telling you now, you're not leaving it till you sign the contract. End of. He said, I know there's clubs interested in you. That's why I brought you here. That's why I'm going to sign you. And I was like, wow, no one's ever said this to me before. And I thought, he's Scottish as well. He could probably scrap. So I'm thinking, <laughs> right, this is going to be interesting. And um, so obviously, we, we, we're sitting around the table now. Me, my agent, uh, the chairman, and uh, Darren Ferguson. And uh, so negotiating the sort of thing. So that's something. And then Ferguson says to me, he said, is there anything else you want? And I was like, well, yeah, probably like, you know, like a goal bonus. And I was like, right, put that in. Oh, I said, like, so he just basically said, whatever, like near enough things that I wanted within reason. He was like, right, let's get it sorted. I need to get him in. I need to get it sorted. And he'd done everything he could to get me in. I just thought, you know what? I thought, this guy here that's trying everything he can to get me in, he obviously really wants me. If, you, if I sign for this club with him, imagine the next level he can take me. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, Nigel's, like I say, Nigel's the best person I've worked under, but I thought, this is Darren Ferguson. This is Alex Ferguson's son. Like, 
yeah. he's a press manager and all, and all the things he's put out here and the size of the club and the fan base and this is I say when I said to you about Nick Sowell like Scunthorpe we stayed up but I knew all the players were leaving I knew Grant McCann was leaving I knew Marcus Williams was leaving Matthew uh-huh. Sparrow Dave Murphy uh, I knew Hoots was getting sold to Celtic as well before that happened yeah, so yeah. I thought already if I stay that's, that's six first team players leaving out of 11 yeah so and Hoops has just got 30 goals in League One and 20 goals in the Championship. If we lose him, that's 50 goals we've just lost in two seasons. Yeah. yeah. And I'm thinking, who am I going to play up front with? Like, I've got, obviously, I've got 33 in the last two <coughs> seasons. That's, do you know what I mean? That's 83 goals. I'm thinking, right, what, what are we going to do now? Like, it's, um, it's quite a little bit surreal, a little bit. So, um, I was like, right, okay. So, I was like, right. This is probably my next ambition. What I said to you about like going to a club, like when I went to Barnsley from Scunthorpe, all right, this is my next step now. I could, and then it was just talking about the Premiership. That's all Darren Ferguson was saying. Look, players are getting, we're getting the playoffs, we're getting the top two. That's my ambition. We're going to get to the Premiership. And I thought, wow, imagine being in the Premiership. I didn't even think about that in a way. Do you know what I mean? You just roll with it. So yeah, yeah. went there, and then um, yeah, that, and that's that's why I signed Preston on a three-year deal purely because that, and plus Ferguson wouldn't let me get out of the room. Right, and that season. I think it it didn't really kind of go according to <laughs> according to plan, did it? You, from a from a club perspective, they no. they they finished well. They got relegated in the end, didn't they? From what I yeah yeah yeah. How, how, why do you think it didn't work out? Just just very briefly, because I know you were only there for the one season. But from a club perspective and from his perspective, you know he's got all of these ambitions. Why do, do you? Is there anything you can kind of pinpoint to say that it just didn't work out? Everything went wrong, <laughs> apart from me getting seriously injured. Everything you name went wrong. So when I first signed, so I signed a three-year contract on a lot of money. And I thought, wow, like, we're up now. And to be fair, Fergie was immense. So how, how he works is obviously your contract runs from until the end of June, right? Yeah. And so Ferguson wanted everyone to be back in pre on the 26th of June. Yep. But my contract ran out with Scunport on the 30th of June. So I couldn't train with Preston. So I said to, Press, uh, to Darren Ferguson in the thing, I said, look, as a child, I said, it's fine. I'll come four days after. It's not a problem. I'll, I'll have an extended holiday. It doesn't bother me. It's nice. And he went, that's funny, Paul, but you're going to be in on the 26th. He went, how can we make this work? <clears throat> so he talked about it. What they did is, obviously, they started taking over my contract from Scunport from that, that, from that day afterwards. Yeah. So they started paying me my Preston wage... All through, uh, all through May and all through July. Uh, so, yeah, all through May, all through June. So then I could start training on the 26th of June. So, so like I say, I started getting on my Preston wage and my championship wages two months previously because Ferguson wanted me to come in, obviously, for the first four days before my contract started in the 1st of July. So my contract, I could roll into that. So they've done that, and I thought, brilliantly. Pollen was three weeks after that or a month after that, club obviously near enough went bust and said they're administration. So I was like, so I've just signed a three year contract here and I'm thinking, what the fuck have I just done? Like, <laughs> I'm not even going to get paid. Like, what have I done? Done. So I phoned Fergie up, he's not answering, I'm panicking, that sort of thing. My, me and my ex-wife are arguing at each other's throats. Yeah. Um, so obviously that's all worrying sort of thing. And then I've um, got hold of him, he said, no, no, listen, it's just, there's a change over the chairman's and there's, there's listen, he said, there's so many things going on financially sort of thing. They, they have to deal with this. How they, he said, look, look, we're footballers. We don't deal with that. Just let them deal with it sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, didn't, didn't properly go into administration. But anyway, what happened was is all the players that Fergie wanted to bring in, Preston didn't allow him to bring in. They said, we ain't got the money for. But the problem at the time is he turned to, to Darren Carter, um, Richard Chaplow, um, who else was there? Da- um, Neil Mellor, um, yeah. Neil, Neil Collins. Uh, Eddie Nolan there's about seven players who have established championship players and, and premiership players my yeah, ad all yeah. said to them <clears throat> you're not for me I'm getting rid of you you can leave so we started the season with about 13 players first team pro players because uh-huh. he couldn't bring anyone in Yeah. so already we were way behind other yeah. squads because they were in depth sort of thing so yeah. and obviously so we started the season really really poorly he brought in a couple a couple of players more but it, they weren't the standards I wasn't playing well because I, I didn't really have a striker to play. Me and Chris Brown were playing for a little bit, but me and, yeah, me yeah. and Chris Brown, me and Brownie were very, very similar players. Yeah, you were, yeah. Uh, neither, neither one of us sort of running behind electric pace. 
either he, he was more of a target man where I was more of a, like a number 10 to try and link up and there was no penetration in behind. Yeah, so yeah. it was very much like defenders sort of <clears throat> read us a little bit. Then obviously John Parkin was there, which was, he's just like Chris Brown because he's just come back from injury, a big target man. So we had no pace in behind. So no. Ferguson hated that. Then he brought in Josh King. The uh, from from you know the Bournemouth one. Yeah. So yeah. King, Kingy come in. He's only 18 from Man United, and he was raw. He was quick, but very raw. Mm. And his hold up play wasn't great. He was offside a lot. He wasn't scoring goals. And I was struggling to get a relationship with him. Him and Brownie go together. And we was all struggling to get a relationship with each other. And, we, and by that time, we was conceding goals. So we started the season off really poorly. Mm. Um, and obviously, Fergie pulled me in about two months into it, and said, obviously, he brought in Ian, Ian Hume, and said, listen. Bore Ian Hume in, we can't afford to, to keep him in, obviously, anywhere else. I want you to go the other way on loan. And I was like, what? You want me to go out on loan already after two months? Yeah. I said, no, he's starting the season well. He said, yeah, Paul. He said, like, I think it hasn't really worked at this moment in time. I think you need to go and play football. You know, go and play some football and come back and see where you're at. I was like, Fergie, I was just, obviously, I said, like, Gaffer, I've just signed a three-year deal, like. And he was like, no, no. Um, I was like, right. I said, like anything, I've always said, anyway, if a manager doesn't want you, leave. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or if there's an opportunity, always go and play football. Don't don't try and sometimes sit there and just wait your time. Wherever you go, go and play football. So Mark Robbins obviously wanted to get me in. He got me in. I was there for two and a, I was there till Christmas. And the funny thing is, we were, I was at Preston, who was we was bottom or second bottom, and I went to Barnsley, who was sixth in the league in the championship. Yeah. And it's unheard of that any players go out on loan <coughs> to better themselves. You normally go to a side that's below you or in a different league. Yeah. So I've gone I've gone from bottom of the league to sixth in the league. So I've yeah. gone from a, a losing mentality to a, to a winning mentality now. And it was just so surreal and so new. And Shax was there as well. He was a captain, Jason Shackle. So obviously, first time I've seen Shax since that goal at, at Norwich. So um, obviously, rubbed it in sort of thing as I do. And um, I knew a few of the boys there. Bobby Hassel, because I've gone back to Barnsley now as well. So Bobby Hassel there, Martin Devaney and stuff. Some of the old players who are, who are really good friends. Um, so gone back there, really enjoyed my time bit part player sort of thing but I didn't really expect to play all the time because I was in the playoffs and then Mark Robbins just said to me look I'm not going to take on your, your loan because it was loan view to permanent he said look I'm not going to take you permanently because I think we can probably get better for our money I said look Rob like Gaffer it's fine I totally understand I'm not really playing I don't expect you to buy me um, it's fine I'll go back but the problem is when I went back a week I think a few days before that Ferguson got sacked Yeah. so could we down the bottom Ferguson got sacked David Unsworth was a, was temporary manager at the time, and I love Unzi to bits. I yeah. think he's a man mountain, lovely guy, great guy, and uh, and, and Unzi quite liked me. So Unzi phoned me, said, "Like Paul, <coughs> buzzing to have you back. We got Crystal Palace away um, in two days. Get your ass back here. We're going on the train down to, to London tomorrow. Uh, we're going to play Palace. You're going to play up front for me." I was like, "Unzi, brilliant. I can't wait. I'm so excited." And I ain't had that buzz for ages. So. We played. I think we lost one nil by a set piece. I think Palace in the close to the playoffs and we were down the bottom. So it was right. And then about three days later, when we were back in training, Phil Brown's come in. But the thing is, Phil Brown's come in, but he just took training for a little bit just to have a look at it, see if he wanted the job or things like that. Yeah. Then he took over. And, um, and that was a recipe for disaster, that was. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. Phil Brown coming in. I've never met um, a manager who is so far up his own ass and so arrogant and so pig-headed. Really? And that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. We... we like, I, straight away, I respected him because I thought, you've been a whole manager, you've got into the premiership. Do you yep. know what I mean? Obviously, I don't, I don't like Cole anyway because I'm scumful. So I don't like Cole anyway. But for what he's done, the achievements he's done, I thought, do you know what? He's a premiership manager, great yep. CV, yep. got promoted, he's managed to keep him up. Obviously, he had his little sing song, but that's fine. Delia Smith done that. Do you know what I mean? He's, um, <laughs> he's obviously got that. So then, um, respect him straight away. But I, I felt like straight away, he didn't have a clue who I was. Um, didn't have, didn't give me a chance. Didn't really know me that well, right. and um, I had to buy my time. I, I think I played. I, I tried my best for him. First couple of games, a bit part player coming on, sort of thing, and then just didn't feature me. And then uh, the, the the icing on the cake was um, he, he, he um, obviously I wasn't put in the squad. So me and Wayne Brown wasn't in the squad, sort of thing. Long about seven other players. We had a big squad back then because Phil Brown just brought in all these players at Christmas. Uh, sorry, in January. And I was way down the pecking order. And we was awful. I was, like, awful. one of the worst teams I played. Like, as in, like, performance-wise, we was awful bad. Yeah. And it's just because everyone didn't like Phil Brown. No one liked playing for him. No one understood what he was trying to do. It was just a recipe for disaster. Training, training was a shambolics. As in, like, he, obviously, training, like, training methods and, and what we did was, was great. But what he wanted and stuff like that, it was just, 
it was a shambles. You know, going to games, our tactics were wrong and they blamed everyone else. And, and um, the thing is, it's like we, we played Hull away and, um, and we were down the bottom. Hull, again, firm with the playoffs, good team. And um, I was on the bench, trying to come off about two minutes at the end anyway. I think he threw me on like token gesture. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We lost 1-0 by a set piece. I think Andy, uh, I think Gerard scored. The, uh, you know, Gerard's like cousin, Andy Gerard. I think it is. Set he's got a set piece scored it. Scored it obviously from a set piece. And I thought, Do you know what? That's an improvement because normally we're getting beat two or three nil, and we we're all, we are getting these shots off, and we're defending awfully. But we defended, you know, we was competitive, but we lost one nil set piece. And he come because it's the first time he's been back at Hull. He's come in into the change room. He's throwing things, saying, "I've never been embarrassed in all my life in football, in all my career." Apart from that, you've embarrassed me. Slam his skips down and start having a go at people. Uh, yeah. and, and it's like, because we've, because he said we've embarrassed him because he's lost at Hull when he was, you know, building up to it saying that, you know, I'm going back for the first time. I'm the frigging saviour. I'm, I'm, I'm this, that and the other. And because he lost in his team, he felt embarrassed and he, turned, he tried to turn on us. And yeah. the problem is we had some big characters in the change rooms, some big yeah. boys. We had... Andrew Lonigan, we have Sean St. Ledger, John Parkin, Chris Brown, myself, yeah. uh, Paul Coots. Like, it's endless. Do you know what I mean? Ross Wallace, uh, Callum Davidson. We had, a, we, had, we had a very Wayne Brown. We had, we had like I say, big characters who've been around the block. And like I say, I never played the Prem, but some of you boys played the Prem on big money. And a bit, they were big money at Preston. So um, we thought, do you know what? You can't talk to players like that. That's just dis- disrespectful. Do you know what I mean? Because you made it all about yourself. If we're in it together... We lose together and we win together. That's just what it is. Don't start turning on us. And then, um, like I say, players just lost respect and confidence and, and belief in him as a manager. And and, uh, and we really, really struggled. But um, the big thing for me, there was a couple of things. Like I say, I fell out of him a lot of the times. But um, like I say, wasn't in the squad, which is fine. But there was a reserve game the next day. And he only picked me and Wes, uh, Wayne Brown for that game. Yeah. And all the, rest of the, all the rest of the, I think there's five or seven other pros, um, as in like, not in the squad. Didn't have to go to the game, but me and him did. And, and we were training, we, we were playing with the youth team, like the youth team boys, at a non-league ground against Oldham, I think it was. And I thought, we, we're getting absolutely nothing out of this. Yeah. So, I, um, so my head was gone. Like, like, I only lost my head a few times in, in football at all. Yeah. Uh, one with Brian Laws way when I was younger. And, and it's taken me a while to lose my head. So I was, like, so I was 20, 27 at the time, I think I was. And I yeah. thought, you know what, last season I've done so well and now look at the situation I'm in. I'm playing with a youth team at a non-league ground against Oldham. I thought, what? this is uh, six months ago. I got player of the season at Stamford in the championship. I was voted on stats like the fourth best striker. And I thought, what am I doing here? Like, yeah. this ain't because I lost my ability. It's purely because this, this guy here has really lost my confidence and belief. Yeah. And I kid you not, I don't f- all that game. <laughs> I played. And I literally, went, I, said to, I said to Brownie in the morning, I said, Brownie, I said, I've never done this before. I said, but you'll probably see the most disgusting performance you'll ever see in your life. Yeah, I just don't want to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, Brown, and Brownie went hazy as much as you can. He said, trust me, my head is gone as much as yours. He said, but we just have to get through it. I went, Brownie, I'm defeated, mate. I said, you watch. I said, I won't move. I said, please don't pass me the ball. Just don't pass me the ball. I said, I don't even want it, mate. And, um, and I, was, I was there. And obviously, I didn't, even, I didn't even know, but obviously Phil Brown was there anyway, supposedly. Anyway, we was in the next day. So we didn't even get no days off. So um, I thought, right, okay, that's fine. Because we had to run after the game Tuesday as well. And then we played the Wednesday at two o'clock. And then we was in Thursday for training. So yeah. he pulled me in. But he pulled me in at three o'clock in the afternoon. after tra- Like training was finished about one. He said, well, I'll, I'll see you after training. I went, all right. Um, so we had to train as well. <clears throat> even though we played 90 minutes, we had to train. And uh, he obviously pulled me in. And then he's gone. Um, so I had to wait for him for about two hours after training because he was just faffing around his, in his room as he does. Right. And he, he, never, he never had a one-on-one with me. And he, um, so him and the system manager was there. And I didn't, get, I didn't see eye to eye to his system manager because he, he, he thought he was a bully as well. He was a little man, but he thought he was a bully. Right. So I thought, all right, okay, let's, let's have this. And uh, so I'm thinking, what, what's he calling me in for? And he went, um, you yesterday, he said, you was a disgrace. He said, I went and watched you. I went, I didn't ask you to watch me, did I? <laughs> and he went, uh, he, went, he went, I left after 10 minutes. I went, I'm surprised you lasted that long. I said, the problem is, Gaffer, I said, if you expect to treat, if you expect to treat me like that, that's what you're going to get. Yeah, I, well, said, yeah. why, I said, why have me and, and Brownie, the only two out of everyone, playing that game? He went, because I've asked you to play. I said, yeah, I know you've asked me to play. And we turned up and we played. But that's the performance you're going to get. If you're going to treat us with that disrespect, that's what you're going to get. Yeah. 
Um, I said, look, it's embarrassing what's going on. And I said, the first team are not doing well. I'm better than the strikers you've got. You brought in three new strikers. They're not even scoring goals. They're not performing well, but yet they're still playing ahead of me. It's a disgrace. I should be playing. I should be at least getting a chance. And he was going, and then obviously we had it out sort of thing. And um, his sister managed to get piping up. And I was like, look, I'm, I'm talking to the gaffer. Gaffer picks a team. It's not you. I've been rude to him because he started being rude to me. Anyway, so we had that out. And then the problem is, I had, um, I had loan bids. Uh, Charlton come in loan for me. Brighton come on loan for me. They kept rejecting it. And, and then Derby come in on loan for me, right? Nice. So I, I pulled Brownie. We play Forest away. <coughs> and Derby wanted me, wanted me on loan. So I pulled Brownie on, the, on, uh, on Forest away. We lost 2-0, I think it was. We always lost anyway. I think Brownie come in and we, we lost 14 games in a row when he first come in. Yeah. And, um, and uh, anyway, we were on the coach and away. Home. And I went to the front and said, listen, Gaffer, I said, look, you don't fancy me as a player. It's fine. Like, it's opinions. It's not a problem. I ain't, I ain't got a problem with that. I said, but I've got a chance to go on loan, Gaffer. You've rejected Charlton. You've rejected Brighton. I've got a chance here at Derby. It's your ex-club as well. You know how good it is. It's a massive club. For me to just go and play football, like just just the buzz of it. And he went, I'm not sure. I said, Listen, Gaffer, I just want to go and play, even just for a month. Let me just go and play football. Get you out of your hair. I'll get away from you. <clears throat> you don't get to see me. I just want to go and play football, please. And he was like, He's like, Okay, I'll let you go. So I was buzzing on the way. I'm thought, Right, I'm into Derby tomorrow. I wake up, I've had missed calls. So I'm like, My agent phoned me, he said, The deal's off. I went, What do you mean the deal's off? He was like, Brown has pulled it off now. Oh. He's not going to allow, allow you to go. No. So I was fuming so I went straight into training to have a word with him and he went he went oh, I didn't realise how low down the table they are mate he said uh, you know we're bottom and they're, they're full from bottom he said if you go there and do well I'll look bad I went well then play me then yeah. I said I said, I've got a chance of playing football here I said of course you knew where they were don't tell me you didn't know where they were you know everyone where they are in the league because yeah. you're fighting for relegation here yeah. don't play them to me so we had it out for him and then I just never played yeah that's it 